Yeah. How's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. I love indulging myself in stories that I can personally connect to, and I'm sure the same goes for everybody watching this video right now. It's that moment where you can watch or read something and slowly put your hand to your heart and go, Bruh, I feel you. It's somewhat of a special feeling that definitely creates some kind of connection at a personal level between you and whatever story it is that you're indulging in. I especially love it when I can just stumble upon it without realizing that it's going to be that kind of story and I just so happen to do exactly that when the folks over at Webtoon asked me to review another one of their fantastic works again. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, Webtoon is a free-to-download app that is home to hundreds of original digital manga, manhwa, comics, however you like to call them, that are all 100% free to read. And I know how much us broke-ass otakus react to that magical F word. It's, it's like a Pavlovian effect at this point. And for good reason, so many otakus outside of Japan have such a hard time trying to find manga, manhwa, webtoons, comics, all that kind of stuff for free. Like, it's really hard to get, and even hard to get for a cheap price. So it's awesome to see a website like Webtoon with such a large collection of great works of all genres having the courage and open-heartedness to offer all of their services for absolutely free. The best thing about Webtoon is that it is updated daily with brand new chapters of some great digital manga and it will always remain free. And it's even available on your phone so you can read them at your own leisure any place at any time. Now as I mentioned earlier in the video this isn't my first rodeo with Webtoon. In fact I had previously done a review slash analysis of another one of Webtoon's comics, a horror series by the name of Sweet Home. And I'll leave that, links in the description if you want to check it out. I know a lot of you guys really enjoyed that video. And as much as I absolutely loved the fuck out of Sweet Home, it didn't give me that personal connection. It didn't give me that bro, I feel you kind of connection. As much as I loved it, it didn't give me that special spark of like, oh yeah, I can see myself in this right now. But this one series I managed to find on Webtoon this time around, definitely gave me that feeling. And probably because it deals with subject matters that just hit very closely to the stuff that I do on a daily basis. And as you can see in the title of this video, is a manga series that is just a little too real. And that series is simply called Let's Play. It follows the simple yet bittersweet story of Sam, an up-and-coming game developer girl whose career gets instantly shattered after it gets played by a popular YouTuber, or excuse me, VueTuber by the name of Martial Law. Gotta avoid those copyright names, I see you my boy. Because of his negative review of the game in his video, he didn't even play properly according to Sam, Sam's game gets absolutely destroyed by Marshall's fanbase to the point where it almost makes her give up her hopes and dreams of ever becoming a game developer. However, in a freak turn of events, Sam gets a brand new neighbor who turns out to be, you guessed it, Martial Law himself. Now she not only has to come to terms with the fact that her dream just got destroyed in front of her eyes, but also the fact that the very person who did so is now the closest thing to her life. From there, the story goes down a slew of romantic, comedic, and very meme-based, yet surprisingly deep set of shenanigans between Sam, Marshall, and a whole other bunch of equally quirky and unique characters. Now, immediately, if you've been listening into that synopsis, you can probably tell why I had such a special connection with this series. I don't really think there are many manga, or rather any comics or anything like that, that are based on YouTubers, or excuse me, VTubers, or even following any kind of like online personality-esque type of occupation. There are of course a variety of mediums out there that do explore the kind of internet humor and internet culture. I mean, look at the recently memeified as fuck Pop Team Epic, for example. But even that series didn't really cover the people creating those online memes and those meme cultures and everything like that. It, there isn't really a manga out there, quite like Let's Play, that focuses on the people on the internet. Not only is it about online personalities, but it explores the ins and outs of the rewards, sacrifices, public and private livelihoods, and the weight of morals and ethics when becoming a famous online personality. Which I can tell you guys from a first-hand perspective, not that I'm calling myself a famous online personality or whatever, but just as a person who is an online personality as an occupation, is so painfully accurate, it hurts. 
Apparently, the author of Let's Play, who goes by the name of Mongi, has previously done work with famous YouTubers like Markiplier, so it makes a whole lot of sense why she would be so knowledgeable and experienced in these fields of topic. But even still, the way that Mongi is able to portray these fictional characters that are apparently not based on any one YouTuber at all, but rather just a stereotype or a collective consciousness of what an online personality is. And not just that, but the people that surround them and the people that interact with these online personalities, the way that the internet culture just revolves around these characters is so accurate, it's astounding. For example, there's this whole chapter about Marshall coming to terms with the fact that because of his half assed attempt at reviewing Sam's game and giving it a negative evaluation, he finds his fan base has gone and downvoted her game to destructible levels of low. And there's this whole morality battle that plays through his head as a result of it. While Marshall blames himself for destroying Sam's career, his partner, who is another VTuber, explains that it's not his fault as there is no way that he can control his own fan base like that. He argues over the morals and ethics of whether he should apologize or even tell his fan base to stop downvoting the game. While she argues that by doing that, it will only hurt his career and reputation, and that at the end of the day, it's just not worth it for one measly game designer. Let me tell you guys right now and right here, conversations that are similar to this have happened on a daily basis as a YouTuber. And I'm not just talking about like me and Aki, like I've had conversations similar to this with other YouTube friends. I've had conversations similar to this with just friends who aren't YouTubers. I've heard conversations like this between two different YouTubers and I was just there listening. These kinds of debates and discussions and these worries about the ethical and moral issues surrounding some kind of fuck up on the internet is so accurate, it hurts, and has happened so many times behind the scenes, you guys would probably have no idea. And the worst thing about all this in real life and in Let's Play, as they explain greatly, is that regardless of what your answer is in this situation, nobody wins. It's a lose-lose situation that only just builds more and more stress and anxiety in the personality's brain. And the way that Marshall tries to solve these issues to make it up to Sam is, yes, extreme for the sake of storytelling, of course, but shockingly relatable. Like, there's this scene where Marshall tries to give Sam all of the ad revenue he made on his video to her as a way of apologizing, but Sam will just not accept it. Yes, it's simple. Yes, it's probably dumb, but the fact that there are probably people watching this video who are both agreeing and disagreeing with Martial Law's decision to do that for Sam is exactly the point of the whole discussion and debate that is trying to be portrayed in this series. It digs deep into the psyche of online personalities, of troubles caused on the internet or relationships that are seemingly connected by invaluable things. It's interesting on so many levels and in my case, hits me right in the feels. But there is one particular chapter that I especially enjoyed while reading Let's Play, which I really enjoyed not so much because of the story, but because of the way that it was presented. And I feel that it worked so well because it is a very unique way of presenting a story that you can only really see on web comics like this. Music. In a very emotional chapter where Sam and Marshall do some real talk about the entire situation at hand, the chapter auto plays this piece of original music to add to the somber and tender moment of the story. Yes, it may sound cheesy if you just hear this explanation out of context, but in the context of the story, it's emotional as fuck, trust me on this fam. If you've been following the story up until that point, this chapter becomes an entirely different experience altogether that I don't think you can get from either traditional manga or even anime. It kind of falls somewhere in between, taking the strengths of both formats to surprisingly positive results. I also just personally appreciate the fact that Mongi, the author, decided to only do this with one chapter so far. The author clearly understands the power that music can bring towards a particular part of the story, and the fact that she decided not to overuse it and turn it into what will probably be a really cheesy thing and instead limit it to the really emotional parts and the parts where she wants the readers to feel the most amount of emotion in the story. Now that is definitely some clap-worthy performance right there. But all in all, what I especially enjoyed about Let's Play is the fact that it made me think throughout the entire time. Especially, again, because of that personal connection that I had with it. The fact that it is exploring a topic of online personality. Something that I do as an occupation. And explore it in ways that 
Not many people get to see because it's so behind the scenes. Which is more important, the integrity of your career and persona to your online audience, or to be honest and true to yourself, not being afraid to admit mistakes, despite the backlash and lack of trust you may gain from that very audience. Who is more important, your fans or your close friends? It's matters like these which get explored to interesting depths and sides of the spectrum that I really think hits hard for me. And if you are yourself an online personality, YouTuber, VTuber, whatever, if you just show yourself, present yourself online as I do and as many, many other people do on this particular website at least, then I implore you to go and check out Let's Play because that is definitely made for you. I think it's one of those stories that every online personality needs to delve themselves into and kind of think to yourself, if I was martial law in this situation, what would I do? Because the answer will always change depending on who you are. And at the end of the day, there is no one correct answer. And either way, there is no answer at all. And I just love the whole teasing ambiguity of all of that. It keeps you on your toes the whole time of, oh God, what's this particular online personality gonna do? Because I know that there is probably an online personality out there who will not do what martial law is doing, but there are some who will probably do what martial law is doing. But which is it in the case with this story? It's always exciting and it's especially fun to be on your toes that whole time with all of these cool and unique characters on the sideline. But yeah, I fucking love this manga. I fucking love what you do, Mongi, if you're watching this and I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes from there. And if you've read Let's Play, then I'd love to hear your opinions about it as well. Did you get any personal connections to any of the characters out there? Because of course, not all the characters in this show are let's players or online personalities like there are just some regular RPG players there are some you know just standard people out there doing standard jobs did you get any kind of that special personal connection with any of the characters in this show and if let's play didn't get you that special personal connection then what was a manga or an anime or any kind of medium that did give you that personal connection I'm really interested to hear all of your thoughts and opinions and all of that so make sure to let me know all that kind of stuff in the comments below thank you once again to the folks over at web Tuned for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to click the first links in the description below to go check out Webtoon, go download the iOS and Android versions of it, and go and explore all of that sweet, sweet, 100% free digital manga, manhwa, comics, whatever the fuck you call them. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. As always, like a favorite if you enjoy, subscribe for Renner Banner, and I'll see you guys in the next video of whatever I make. Keep watching anime. Johnny!